These sheep are eating their way through large areas of sagebrush on this central Utah rangeland. They're here to thin out the brush and create open areas that are intended to improve the feeding grounds for sage grouse, a bird that is close to being placed on the endangered species list. To survive, the grouse use a combination of thick brush to protect their nests and forage for food in open areas with healthy grasses. Well, one of the things that sage grouse in particular really need is、uh, some good high protein groceries when those chicks are first born. And so on this site, which is both a nesting site and an early brood rearing site, that allows more forbs and grasses to grow, and that in turn allows more insects to be here. And th- those are really good feeds for those chicks. The trimmed back sagebrush lets more light hit the ground, which stimulates other plant growth, and it allows water to penetrate to the roots of other plants that are a more desirable feed than sagebrush. What we expect to see here is an increase in the amount of forbs and grasses and insects that are available for the sage grouse on this site. Is that expected to lead to greater numbers of grouse here? Yes, yes, that is the hope. That is the hope that it will generate that. This manipulation of the sagebrush is intended to mimic conditions that existed here decades ago, when Utah's sheep population numbered more than two million animals. It was also a time when sage grouse populations flourished. This looks very good, and the site that that the sheep have just finished with looks even better than this. Okay, this is this has been、uh, this is probably the heaviest grazed area, and.、Um, Andy Taft is part of a generations-old sheep herding family. The grasses and forbs are dormant and frozen in the ground, and、um, as you can see, this has been really cropped back, and a lot of open spaces allow the grasses to come back and the forbs to come back. So,、uh, in the spring, this will really green up. There's a lot of manure on it, a lot of urine. It'll、um, really help the the regrowth. So. He's taking part in this project for a couple of reasons: to cut back on buying expensive feed, and to demonstrate what can happen when livestock are used to control the ever-present sagebrush.、Um, I'm interested in knocking back the sagebrush canopy to try to encourage the grasses and forbs and those kind of things、uh, to try to improve the habitat for my sheep in the future, as well as、uh, you know wildlife and everything that uses the ground out here, the land out here. The project was designed and funded by the Utah Department of Agriculture and Foods Grazing Improvement Program, along with the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources, Utah State University, and CITLA, the State of Utah Schools and Institutional Trust Lands Administration. And while the project directly benefits the sage grouse, the project also demonstrates the important relationship between livestock and the environment. Historically, sheep numbers across the state have declined. 1930s, 1940s. There's millions of sheep in the state of Utah.、Uh, conditions have changed, and、uh, economics have changed, and the and the number of sheep across the state have fallen. We've also seen a co-、uh, trend with wildlife, mainly sage grouse and deer. Those t- those numbers have also fallen. There's a theory out there that says that with the livestock grazing. Sheep, in particular, they were helping to create environments that benefited both the deer and sagehens. This project also demonstrates the mutual benefits that livestock and wildlife offer each other. I think many times、uh, people have the perception that wildlife and livestock are in direct competition with each other, and, and it's always got to be a war between wildlife interests and, and livestock interests. And that's—I don't think that's the case. I think there are opportunities like this. And so here we are using a domestic livestock animal to directly benefit、uh, a species that's got some real concerns. The GIP program is also using livestock in other areas of the state to improve wildlife populations as well as landscape health.